If there's one thing that I can't stress enough about coffee is that you need to be consuming organic coffee if you are going to be consuming coffee. And the reason that is is due to the fact that coffee, non-organic coffee is one of the most number one sprayed crops on the market. And let me tell you, they're doing it deliberately due to the fact that the system knows that a large percentage of the United States consumes coffee habitually every day, throughout the day, in the morning, etc. So... I'm not going to talk too much about coffee. I just wanted to make a brief little video. This was $4.99 a bag. This was on sale. You know, if you look around the internet or if you go to stores, I got this at Sprouts Farmer's Market. There's sales often, and you can get good quality, expensive uh, organic coffee for much cheaper. So when there are sales, I like to load up. Normally this is $13.99 a bag. I got it for $4. So this is whole bean Honduran coffee, and it's organic and uh, you know you just want to do the best that you can you know many people are drinking Folgers and all these other non-organic coffees instant coffee and all this other stuff and it's just not good due to the fact that there are so many pesticides and different constituents being sprayed on non-organic coffee that would make your head spin and unless I'm my studies and my research is wrong just about 95 percent of the coffee that they're selling in coffee shops is not organic and they're making that coffee with non-filtered water filled with chloramine compounds, different pipe residues, scaling lime, uh, hydrofluorosilicic acid, etc. Not to mention, when you buy coffee at coffee shops, I mean, four shots of espresso at a coffee shop is anywhere from 3 to $4. So for the price of one coffee, I can get a whole bag of organic coffee and make my own coffee in the comfort of my own home with clean, spiritually restructured, distilled water or purified water, etc. And I like to drink coffee cold, so I'll make a 12-cup batch and I'll put it in the refrigerator. I'll put a couple of drops of fulvic acid in it and I'll sweeten it sometimes with, uh, you know, things like zero-calorie stevia or things of that nature. Because sometimes I do like a little bit of sweetener, although 99% of the times, 99% of the time I'll drink it black just with like a drop of magnesium in it or a drop of Dr. Kassar's fulvic acid. I've been doing that for years and I love that morning ritual. I have taken breaks from coffee, structured breaks, but I keep coming back to it. It's a tool that I like to use here in this matrix. I use it to suppress appetite and I like to consume coffee in somewhat of a spiritual ritualistic manner in the same way that I like to take cacao. When I take cacao, I like to really get down into kind of a meditative mindset and take it ritually. I like to be conscious as I consume the foods that I eat. We're supposed to focus when we eat. But here in this matrix it's taught you that you just shovel, shovel, shovel. Most people aren't even chewing their foods properly and they wonder why they get sick. They wonder why they have bad digestion. They wonder why their heads are, aren't clear. A lot of the foods that we're eating are dangerous from the get-go and on top of that most of the foods people are eating they're not being masticated properly within the man-made juicer, the smoothie, the jaw. We're supposed to chew our foods, we're supposed to enjoy our foods. We're not supposed to just take a big bite and then take two chews and swallow it. It's so easy to eat... Excuse me. It's amazing how much food can be on someone's plate and it's amazing how fast they can go through that food. So it's typical for a large meal to be eaten within 5 to 15 minutes after someone starts sitting down to eat it, sometimes even quicker. So once you realize that you can really stretch that out, you can eat for upwards of an hour if you eat slow enough, if you, if you chew it methodically enough, and you just get much more out of that. It's much more enjoyable to eat for a longer period and eat it in a more structured manner than it is to just plow through it like a fucking glutton. Like it's some like hot dog eating contest or a food eating contest. There's no rush. What are you what are you rushing for? Essentially it's the parasites. And I know most people think that parasites aren't real or that they don't have them. That's the ignorance talking. So you won't know that you have parasites until you start cleansing and you start doing things like parasite detoxification or I'm just amazed at how well my body's reacted to the simple coffee enema. I've eliminated so many ropeworm pieces, so many tapeworm pieces, so many different gallstones and different abominations, impacted fecal matter, 
with the simple coffee enema. And many, many people think the coffee enema is, isn't a colon cleanser. And many people think that the coffee enema is strictly a liver detox modality, but it's not the truth. In fact, I've had more profound results with coffee enemas for colon cleansing than any other form of enema other than, you know, the go-to cola enema and some other enemas, which I don't really feel at liberty of, of talking about here publicly. But, again, just a brief little video. If you're going to be consuming coffee, I really do recommend that you, uh, you get some organic coffee. And especially when it's like the first thing, if it's the first thing you drink in the morning, after a long period of your body fasting during sleep, you don't want to flood your body with a bunch of coffee filled with pesticides and fungicides, larvicides, and all the other shit that they're spraying on this stuff. So, coffee already is a very acidic beverage, and if you mix it with pesticides, I mean, come on, people. Come on, come on, come on. But I can understand why people buy cheaper coffee. I mean, depending on how much you drink, it can be kind of an expensive habit. And, uh, I don't know, man. It's just a crazy world. I, I, essentially, I don't even think people give a fuck. I know that there's a small percentage out here of people who actually care about what they put in their body, but statistics prove that Americans really don't think before they react. And, unfortunately, that usually means consequences to their health due to the fact that when you just shove things down your throat without knowing what they are, where they came from, what they were grown with, how they were treated, etc., you download that ignorant file of information and it goes right into your physiology. So do what you're going to do, Junior. If you want to think it's a joke to to take care of your health, then do it. And let, let me tell you, there's plenty of people doing that. And again, if you think I'm a dick for saying that, why don't you look at the statistics? Why don't you poke your head in and look at the truth? Then you'll come to realize that what I'm saying is the truth. Your health is the only thing you have and, oh, oh, what is it, too much of a, an effort for you to, to spend an extra dollar or two on some organic coffee? Jesus Christ. But, peace be with you.